alternate accounts. Uh, depende kasi siya sa use, di ba? Ayun. So, anong opinion mo sa mga taong ginagawa or ginagamit itong as source of income? Um, when you talk about it kasi to gain profit, parang lahat naman sa social media is a means na rin to profit off, di ba? Um, the thing is, what they are doing is also consensual in a way na they approve of this and they are willing to share a part of them or share a piece of them na uh, considered as a taboo. Personally, wala akong problema with it kasi syempre, um, it's how we cope up eh, economically speaking. Um, siguro kung hindi gantong uh, ka-unfair or ka-unjust yung system for all of us, regardless of our uh, social status in life, hindi natin kailangan mag-engage sa mga gantong acts or even yung super lala na umaabot na tayo sa prostitution. Yun. So, with Alter, I think it's a safe um, buffer between the extreme uh, extreme aggression of prostitution to the extreme uh, disregard sa economic status natin. Ayan. So hello, I'm a 19-year-old alter Pinay. There was a time na I was contemplating if I should still pursue this job kasi sabi nga nila easy money to. Imagine hindi ka na kailangan magtrabaho at magkanta kuba-kuba, di ba? Um, it's a pleasure. I am a working student and I work two jobs at a time. Isa na rin yung pagkakaroon ko ng alter account. Ang nag lang naman sa akin to do this is my family. Um, I'm the breadwinner and as much as possible, gusto kong may ma-provide ako sa kanila kahit pa ba. They don't say it directly to me but I know umaasa sila sa akin. I don't rely on alter alone actually. Sideline ko nga lang to and um, to be honest, I just discovered this recently, like a week ago. And let me tell you, um, in a span of seven days, ang laki na ko. 
what made me continue doing this is the benefits that we alter the alter penis get from the buyers specifically mga lalaki sila we get the validation and the money that we want and deserve and they get to satisfy their lustful desires and needs diba there are still days na alam mo yun napapaisip ako na natatanong ko yung sarili ko na ganto ko na lang ba talaga i-degrade yung sarili ko nagbe-benefit nga po sila pero hindi po maganda kasi syempre po R18 yun tapos makikita po ng mga ibang users lalo na po yung mga bata ngayon nag Twitter na din po but at the end of the day pag para sa pamilya at para sa sarili mo naman yung pag-uusapan hindi na magmamata yun okay. We are not merely child bearers or regulators of household chores. We can be in positions of power and raise or provide for a family if we want to. And I would also like to intensify the fact that women get empowered in different ways. Some with modesty, others with boldness. So we cannot really dictate how women should express themselves. Because there is no standard mold for self-disclosure. And this works for different genders and sexualities. And this brings us to the topic that we will be discussing, which is the selling of a scene or sensual contents for financial purposes. Sinabi ko kanina na may iba't ibang mukha ang empowerment which can be in the form of boldness or self-preservation and modesty. Pero kaya natin hindi nagiging empowering ang mekanismo na ito kahit na it can provide for a family and it could show that women can handle being breadwinners. Dito na po pumapasok yung external constraints and pressures. Tanungin natin ang ating mga sarili. Even if it is consensual, does this enable the individual to live a dignified life? At higit sa lahat, if there are alternatives or other options, pipiliin pa rin ba nila ito? This is not to reinforce restrictive social constructs, but to elaborate that women should be given the opportunity and the right to self-designate willingly and freely. Isa pang list ng pagbibenta ng obscene contents online, kahit ito'y consensual pa, is that it is prone to exploitation. Mula sa lahat ng isyu na ating napag-usapan, isang maayos na solusyon na pwede nating maipresenta ay una pagtibayin ang ating konstitusyon. We should have assurance that the constitutional laws are executed impartially. Make the violators and oppressors accountable and seek justice for the victims. We could refer to the parents or guardians of youth, lalo na kung minor ka itad. Pasok ito sa juvenile delinquency, child labor, and exploitation. If by chance that they are old enough, or pasok na ang kanilang edad sa age of consent, this doesn't make the involvement of parents less. Kailangan pa rin sila for guidance and of course, providing their needs sufficiently sapagkat hindi kailangan ng anak na umako ng responsibilidad ng mga magulang. At sana matap na yung ating mga departamento, government or non-governmental organizations para sa kababaihan and human rights. Hindi lang para sa pinansyal o physical na stabilidad ng kababaihan or any superficial help that they can gain, pero para na rin sa kanilang psychological well-being. We all have the right to exercise bodily autonomy, but may we use it in ways not driven by external pressure. At higit sa lahat, let us collectively beat this negative mechanism. Let us not patronize activities that promote human exploitation. And of course, demand accountability from the oppressors and the violators. If we cannot stop them from jeopardizing lives or rights, the least we can do is to make them feel uncomfortable as they do so. It is about time to intensify that yes, people have the autonomy over their bodies and lives. Thank you.